Hi, it's Mine Crypto here. I hope we're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Remember, this isn't financial advice. Always do your own research. Mine Crypto here. I hope we're all having a wonderful day. And the title of the video is Quant. They are misled. And we'll get to that in just a moment. We'll look at first and foremost the crypto bubbles. We are down one rank to 39. Market cap of 1.05 billion. And Quant price $86.88 with a 24 hour volume of 15 million. We are up 0.2% in the hour. We are up 0.5% in the day. We are down 4.8% in the week. We are down 14.9% in the month. So there you go. Looking a bit mixed today. But we remember we are in a bear market. There's lots of people worrying, you know, is it going down? Is it going up? Everything. But we need to keep our mind focused. This is what we would call an accumulation phase. And we are here for the long time. At least I'm here for the long time. I'm not looking for a short term fix. Like you get a lot in the crypto space looking for those pumps. This is an accumulation phase. It is a bear market. Remember that. And we're not just talking weeks, we're talking months. So there you go. Remember, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. You should always do your own research. So let's have a look. Bull shark trading. Just a quick note this morning, Quant managed to close above the key support of $86.9. And with the last two candles showing a slowing of momentum and indecision, we could see price consolidate here or even attempt to push up. As stated in previous post, a valid break. And we look for the fair value gap to be at least partially filled. Patience is key and you can see here the fair value gaps that could be filled but we'll wait and see anyhow i saw this tweet from just the tech guy and he says and thus fail to fully appreciate how these goals have shaped the internet to achieve its success as we see it today and as i put quant they won't be putting all their eggs in one basket and i've said this many times the banks will have their cake and eat it. They will pick and choose bits and bobs from different areas and then create something to run the whole system. So we see here the quote, in the world of blockchain technology, many of the leading developers of blockchain protocols, I wonder who that is, and networks seek to be the sole platform where transactions occur. We believe this outlook is too short term and even naive given the history of the purpose of the internet development. Now, <laughs> they couldn't have said it even more plain. What people need to know is again, they're not going to pick one. They're not going to they're not going to cause themselves a, a whole load of problems. They want to have each segment covered and they'll pick several use cases to be able to do that. And it says it carries on from here. Many leading voices in the blockchain world often fail to understand the fundamental goals of the Internet architecture as promoted and led by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, and thus fail to fully appreciate how these goals have shaped the Internet to achieve its success as we see it today. There was a pressing need in the Cold War period in the 1960s and 70s to develop a new communication network architecture that did not previously exist, one that would allow communications to survive in the face of attacks. Again, as you'll see there, this isn't going to be a one man show. They will look at various different fin technologies and they will pop it all together because the banks ultimately have the control. We must remember that. And I see this tweet from Miles Braun. It says, Linkmax is mad at this one. Quant is the true universal interoperability. It's also why they patented a universal time zone for blockchains. And we see this from Construction Eve. Documentation here from the Hyperledger Foundation. Not only did the BIS confirm that oracles will not be sufficient for true interoperability, the Hyperledger Foundation has confirmed this too. Quant is the only one who provides the true interoperability. And we'll have a look here. And it says, over the years, there have been many attempts to solve this problem of interoperability. This is just one thing of the various approaches taken. The World Economic Forum, the WEF, identified three main categories, cross-authentication DLT relayers, oracles, and the API gateway, which of course, begs the obvious question, which is the best path to follow in the search of true universal interoperability? And then we see, 
An API provides access to a server and the resources it is connected to. An API gateway provides organized access to many underlying API resources, simplifying requests to underlying resources to improve the user experience. A DLT gateway can have shared and endpoints across distributed ledger networks, standardized DLT data objects, and compress many DLT actions into one endpoint. This approach we take with Quant's Overledger API. And we continue. And as we see here, smart contract logic then states how consensus of data is achieved between multiple inputs recorded by different oracles. An example of an oracle system is Chainlink. Then we read this. The brief analysis above points to a clear conclusion. API gateways have significant advantage over the other approaches. And it was for this reason that Quant chose the API gateway model for Overledger, our own solution to the challenge of interoperability. So we know from this, the big banks organization are looking at Quant for interoperability. And that's clear. Now, for someone that believes that it'd be a one catch all scenario protocol, again, as we know, is very naive to think that. They're not going to put all their eggs in one basket. And we see this tweet from Quantfony. We've been waiting for some news from Quant Network and they've been They've been busy in the background doing their busy, busy things. And he says here, while working on large scale infrastructure projects like Lackchain and Project Rosalind, we've developed a suite of testing tools and bolstered the specialist knowledge required to audit smart contracts to the highest standards. And then we look at Quant here and they've said, we've launched a new service today for financial institutions, payment firms and other enterprises struggling to protect their smart contracts and decentralized and applications from vulnerabilities. So I'm not going to go through all this because I think most of you would have actually read it. But I think this is where we are at with Quan. They are forward thinking. They are always looking where they can fix something. And that's what you want to see in a project in this market. They're actually working, they're actually solving problems. And as we see, Quant Smart Audit protects enterprises against the $4 billion threat of smart contract hacks. Now, this is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm really excited about this project, as you know, and you know, I can't be more positive about it, especially whilst we're in this bear market at the moment and they're working really hard. And if we don't see a tweet from the team for two, three weeks, let's not get all uppity and worried. You know, we know they're working. We know that they're doing stuff like this in the background because this is what you want them to do. If they're out there constantly marketing themselves, they're doing this, they're doing that, and you know, they're spending more time vocalizing, then it make you wonder what they're actually doing in the meantime. Well, we know this is what they're doing. So there you go, guys, just a quick update. And please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any further videos. All the best and I'll catch you later. Remember, this isn't financial advice. Always do your own research.